I met Jen in the pub about eight years ago now. Um, it's quite a long time ago. Uh, she doesn't remember meeting me. I remember meeting her. <laughs> but she does distinctly remember the festival we went to shortly afterwards, however. It was a memorable experience, and I'm sure one of the guys will cover a bit more later in one of their speeches. Um, but it's the first time I really got to know Jen, and uh, I wanted to be with her from that moment onwards. Um, so it was an event I didn't make it to, and it was a festival called Sonosphere um, many, many years ago. No doubt Rick was probably halfway through his 14th bottle of Jack. Like, that's what he did at festivals. Anyway, you know, whilst at that festival, there was something blossoming, um, and it was the love, literally, you see right before you in Rick right and Jen's on. eyes. So, yeah, obviously, Charlene's has pointed out that there were several of them that tied Rick to a chair, and that's literally where it all came along. Um, I'm pretty sure at that moment in time, you're sat there going, yep, <laughs> this is the woman for me. <laughs> whilst being restrained to a chair and being fed alcohol. So, there's that. At least I know what to get you for your anniversary now. It's just some duct tape. It's <laughs> nice and simple. We have quite a few good memories, I think, from that festival, including slow dancing to Richard Cheese in the middle of a field. That was good. Um, needless to say, we were both with someone else at the time, so nothing much could happen at that moment. Uh, but we did keep in touch over the next few years, and we met up for a few times. Uh, exchanged some birthday and Christmas gifts until I bought Jen a nice necklace for Christmas. This turned out to be a massive mistake, as she stopped talking to me for about six months. Apparently it was a better gift than the socks her boyfriend at the time had given her, so it caused some friction. Some time afterwards, um, I was asked by Rick in a really roundabout way if I wanted to go to the pub. Um, and for those of you that know me, of course I said yes. Um, but I understood something wasn't quite right. He was a little bit, a little bit off, um, a bit sheepish about asking me, and I was a bit like, this isn't like Rick. I said yes, it's fine, no worries. So we're in the pub playing pool. Myself and Rick. And we're having a great evening. It's been about an hour. And um, in walks Steph, one of Jen's bridesmaids. So I've known Steph probably as long, if not longer, than I've known Rick. Um, and I was like, wow, what a coincidence. Brilliant. Hey, how are you, Jennifer? And Jen walks in following Steph. Anyway, it sort of became apparent from that moment um, that there was something special there. Um, however, however, you were trying to be, you were trying to be subtle about it. Um, and anyone that knows Rick knows Rick knows that um, subtlety is not your forte. I'll be honest, mate. It was about as subtle as a brick to the face.
Richard Andrew Mottram. I, Richard Andrew Mottram. Take you, Jennifer Louise Peck. Take you, Jennifer Louise Peck. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And you've chosen to make an additional vow. I promise to care for you above all others. I promise to care for you above all others. To give you my love and friendship. To give you my love and friendship. Support and comfort. Support and comfort. And to respect and cherish you. And to respect and cherish you. Throughout our lives together. Throughout our lives together. I, Jennifer Louise Peck. I, Jennifer Louise Peck. Take you, Richard Andrew Mottram. Take you, Richard Andrew Mottram. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And the additional vows. I promise to care for you above all others. I promise to care for you above all others. To give you my love and friendship. To give you my love and friendship. Support and comfort. Support and comfort. And to respect and cherish you. To respect and cherish you. Throughout our lives together. Throughout our lives together. through the sunshine and the storm and keep the flame of true devotion glowing bright and warm. If you can give each other room to grow and learn yet still hold each other close in mutual concern. If you can both be lovers and the very best of friends and face together hand in hand the challenges life sends. If you can offer patience, comfort and real understanding, encourage one another's efforts yet be undemanding. If you can show true love and faith in everything you do, then married life will surely hold much joy for both of you. Therefore, it gives me the greatest pleasure to tell you that you are now indeed husband and wife, and you may greet your Unfortunately, as with all occasions such as this, it's not possible to have everyone we love here today. Um, my dad, my godfather, Jen's aunt and our grandparents are unfortunately not with us today and I've certainly found her absence. But yeah, so Rick's also, um, Rick's got a charming innocence about him. Uh, he, he really does. He, he thinks... Um, if he says something enough times and with enough force of will, people will just believe it, even if it's clearly not true. Um, so uh, just, just an example of this, when Rick was around 16 or 17, he went out with, um, with a friend of his um, for a night out, it's fine, um, and he came home and he was in a right state. His face was all bloody, his nose was busted up, and oh, it looked awful. Um, and my dad said to him, oh, what, what's happened here, you know? Um, and Rick said, I tripped and I fell and I hit the floor with my face. Of course, most people would stop themselves falling like, like this, wouldn't they? But Rick, for some reason, he'd stopped himself just, just like this. <laughs> just, I mean, he'd been in the fight. He'd obviously been in the fight. He knew it, my dad knew We all knew he'd been in the fight. But to this day, he still claims he had a fight <laughs> with the pavement. Um,
But Rick's Other Smile is, uh, is one of just pure joy uh, and adoration. And that's the one that he has whenever he thinks about you, Jen. Um, and uh, it's been a pleasure to see him have that more and more over the last uh, eight years with, with knowing you. So um, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you to the family today. Um, I'd say you don't know what you're getting in for, but you've been around us long enough. You, you do know now. So um, uh, you look beautiful today and uh, welcome. Welcome to now a motor room. That's, Poor person. Um, so I'm supposed to give you some marital advice at this point, Rick and Jen, um, but not being married myself yet, I, I don't really have any to, to impart. So uh, what I do understand is, um, you know, a key part of, of a good marriage is uh, just to minimise the pain points, the issues. Um, so what I can say on that is, Rick, just put your stuff in the bloody dishwasher, yeah? Like, um, I know it's love uh, that has made Jenny the happiest and most confident person I've ever seen her to be. Um, and it's wonderful to see her and Rick together. But Rick, just one word. Stop stealing her food at the dinner table. <laughs> don't force her to eat sprouts. You know she don't like them. And don't lick her face at the dinner table, please. It puts me off my bloody dinner. The distance between us will get in between us and not talk. Jenny's always been my favourite elder daughter and always will be. Your mum and I are so proud of you, sweetheart, and we couldn't be happier for you and Rick. And as today, you start the next chapter of your lives together, we love you both so much and wish you every happiness over the years, as much as me and your mum have shared. Rick, Jen, they say today is supposed to be the happiest day of your life, but it's not. It's the happiest so far. Okay. Um, there's no doubt going to be many, many more together in your future, and I really do wish you both the best. Uh, we moved in together pretty quickly and it was like it was meant to be. I decided very quickly that I wanted to spend the rest of my life together with this beautiful, generous, quirky girl and especially her face pulling when she eats an olive. <laughs> <laughs> so I secretly bought a ring and hatched a plan. My work can be demanding and occasionally we can get some authorised perks. So I told her that they had purchased us a nice meal in London as a reward for the hard work I was putting in at the time. They hadn't. That was me. This was alongside a planned trip to see Metallica that week in, the, uh, in London. So I'd contacted Sky Garden in London and they were all in on the event. So when Jem was asked to pose for a photograph, the waitress was actually recording and I proposed to the woman I love, and luckily she said yes. It was one of the best weekends of my life. Mm -hmm. 